Hey everybody, uh, it's a, uh, what's the deal with the priesthood? The Catholic priesthood. That's what Holy Thursday is about, so I want to do a little scriptural exploration of the readings for Holy Thursday because look no further than the, this is the great mass of the priesthood and the Eucharist, which are tightly linked. The Eucharist and the priesthood really uh, go together in a particular way. So I just want to explore that with you now in this um, Dive, diving into the scriptures, and hopefully it'll help you understand in a scriptural way the mystery of the Catholic priesthood. Let us pray. Lord, we praise you for the gift of the priesthood and the gift of the scriptures. Help us to better understand that great mystery in light of the sacred word of God. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Okay, good. Holy Thursday. Again, these, uh, there's a, a lot in the Bible about the priesthood. But I think that these readings are a great place to look. So just to give you a sense of what they are, and I'm just going to do a little helicopter flyover and touch some highlights. So the, the first reading is from the book of Exodus, chapter 12. And that's where um, God is instructing uh, to Moses and Aaron while they're wandering through the de desert early on um, how he's instituting the Passover sacrifice. And then in the letter of, uh, the second reading is the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. And that's where Paul is talking about how he handed on from the Lord. Well, he, he, he received from the Lord. Now what he's handing on to the Corinthians and in a certain sense to the whole church. Um, when Jesus institutes the new Passover, not with the, the body of a lamb, but with his own body. When Jesus says, this is my body that is for you, do this in remembrance of me. In the same way with the cup. This is the, um, the cup of, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. And then finally, there's the gospel of John. It's the washing of feet reading. Um, when Jesus stands up, takes off the towel, and washes the feet of his um, disciples and commands them. And this um, filling out of what you see in the synoptic gospels of this command to, uh, to do what you have seen him do to the apostles. Okay, where do we start? Well, maybe start with big picture. What is the logic be behind God taking certain men and giving them this particular, within the community of the people of God, this particular priestly ministry? Well, in the Old Testament, you see that with Moses and Aaron. Why? Well, remember what is the big picture of the Bible, but it's God's great rescue mission. God wants to unite himself to his people. Uh, use the analogy of marriage. He wants to marry his people, unite heaven and earth. A chosen people that he calls because out of the sheer gift of love that he desires to pour his uh, life and love into their hearts. So the priesthood becomes this entry point by which he can do that in the community. Remember, there's certain access that Moses and Aaron uh, have that the other people don't have. Remember, um, Moses can go up on Mount Sinai. He enters in the presence of the Lord, and the people and even the animals aren't supposed to even touch the bottom of the mountain. Is that because God doesn't want um, his people to have the privilege of access to him? No, it's a stepping point. It's a starting point. You can't unite everyone to yourself if you can't be in with with one. So Moses then will come down and he'll start to mediate between God and his people. That's what a priest does. He mediates. He's a, a bridge figure between God and the people. Well, now what about Jesus? Well, he's the great high priest, we know from the letter to the Hebrews, because he in an utterly unique way mediates between God and man, because he is the son of God and he's a human being. He has two natures, human and divine, united in his person. So he's, he's a priest in this unique way. He doesn't simply carry out priestly functions, but he's a, he's a priest um, in an unbreakable way. The Bible uses the line, he's a priest according to the order of Melchizedek. Uh, and that figure was someone who has an, like a priesthood without beginning or end. And that's why it's such an apt order uh, to, as, to use as a way to describe the priesthood of Jesus because his priesthood doesn't, it, it's, it's in his own person. And of course, he exercises it um, in, this, in his self-offering on the cross. 
So back to the scriptures. Keeping in mind uh, with Exodus, how um, there's this priesthood in the people of God that's meant to not be a block to God's presence among his people, but a bridge to his presence with his people. In the Gospel of John, here's a great uh, line which I think sums, sums it up as I, lost my, as I lost my page. Okay, here it is. It's from the Gospel of John. These are the words that you, we hear on Holy Thursday. Before the feast of Passover... Jesus knew that his hour had come to pass from this world to the Father. So already there's the the Passover. So Jesus is going to institute a new Passover here. He's not a a priest of the Old Covenant offering a lamb, but he's going to offer his own body and blood. And then that Passover will be from not Jerusalem to, uh, from Egypt to Jerusalem, but from this world, this Jerusalem, to the Father the heavenly Jerusalem. And but here's, here's a line, I think, which helps summarize how Catholics understand the priesthood. Jesus, he loved his own in the world, and he loved them to the end. The, the, the sacrament of the priesthood is an extension and a kind of specification of that line. Jesus promises to be with his church until the end of the ages. And the priesthood is a sacrament of love, of presence and of love. The commandment here at the end is going to be, do you realize what I've done for you? Call me teacher and master and rightly so, for indeed I am. If I, your master and teacher, have washed your feet, you ought to wash one another's feet. So priests aren't, um, in the church, they've never been... Uh, intended to be a kind of caste or of, of like kings or princes. But they're, they're men who are configured what, to Jesus himself, united to him in a special way, and then given this command and this accompanying power to be an instrument by which Jesus will do what he does through, through the, to, until the end of the age. Um, This is the form of the structure. This is the institution of the priesthood here. It's not an invention that the church did later on. You can hear a nice little summary of this in the Chrism Mass prayers. It's from the preface. So again, it highlights that Jesus has one uh, priesthood in in his own person, um, which is going to be shared in different ways. Listen, for by the anointing of the Holy Spirit, you made your only begotten son, speaking to God here, high priest of the new and eternal covenant, And by your wondrous design, we're pleased to decree that this one priesthood should continue in the church. Now, don't immediately think ordained priest. It's the priesthood of all believers, the priesthood that's given and that's shared with every Christian by virtue of baptism. So listen, here it is. For Christ not only adorns with a royal priesthood, the people he has made his own. That's every baptized person. Sharing in his priesthood. How sharing in his priesthood? By being united to him through baptism and faith. Becoming members of his body. Um, Being in that field of force in which God and his human human beings have come together. Every, uh, Every Christian stands in Christ, to use Paul's expression. And insofar as a Christian is in Christ, he or she is in that mediation between God and man, because that's who Christ is. He's true God and true man. But, listen now. But with a brother's kindness, Christ, he also chooses men to become sharers in his sacred ministry through the laying on of hands. Where does that come from? Well, it comes from what Jesus himself did. So, He's, he's calling all the people to follow him. Think of that as all the disciples he calls in the gospel. But then from that group, he selects a certain number of men uh, to be part of the club, to be in the boys club, to be a, a cast of privileged people who are going to you know, make a paycheck off the church. No. Look at the, again, John 13. He chooses them to lay their lives down in and through him by the same power which he uh, gives his, whole, his life to the church, the, the way a husband gives his life to and for his bride, there's a, some men who have a particular gift and call to do that, to wash one another's feet, 
to um, imitate Jesus's self-offering in a particular way? Well, to what end? To be a, a channel of Jesus's love for the church. That, that's why the priesthood is really best understood in light of the sacrament of the Eucharist. It's his self-offering. When, when your priest at Mass stands and, and says, this is my body given up for you, it's primarily spoken in the person of Jesus. It's, it's Jesus's body, right? Um, what good would Father Bob's or Father Dave's body be given up for you? Well, not, not, no good at all, right? But if it's the body of the true Lamb of the new and eternal covenant, who has the power to pass over by that self-offering from this world to the Father, from a broken world to a redeemed world, from earth to heaven, by doing so to unite heaven and earth in a saving way, well, then all of a sudden, that self-offering has real power. But once you understand that it's the offering of Christ himself, now, sacramentally, that means a, a powerful, effective sign is the priest himself who in his own imperfect way has, uh, is standing and offering his own self, his own life, his own future. He's uh, giving himself to Christ and following Christ in a particular way um, in the ordained or ministerial priesthood, which is bestowed uh, by a bishop laying on his hands. It's a sacrament of service, to quote the Catholic Church. It's the service of communion in the church. And... Um, that is maybe made most clearly at Mass, but it's meant to be lived 24 hours a day. Um, why, why the priesthood? I, I mean, you have to ask the Lord about that, but I think you see the, 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 the pattern developed in the Old Testament. Then you see it really fulfilled in how Jesus calls the apostles. Um, and then, you know, you can see that extended through the laying out of hands in other places in the New Testament. And then in the life of the church, I think what you see in the priesthood is how important the sacrament is because we're not in heaven yet fully. Um, we, we live in this in-between time of a fallen world and a redeemed world. And that's why we have the sacraments to give us grace and to uh, give light to our minds about we are on this journey. When you look at the priest at mass, what you're supposed to see is a living sign of Christ himself. That's why we pray for priests. It's, what priests do in the sacraments isn't magic. Um, there are powerful, efficacious signs of grace. But, there, but the signs do matter. So if you, if you see a priest who's a huge jerk, <laughs> then he's still confecting the Eucharist. But it's the, the, the usability of the sign matters. But imagine now you see like a Padre Pio or a St. John Paul II or just a humble man who every day is trying to wash people's feet to lay his life down in service to the church. The sign of that man's participation in the priesthood of Jesus has a particular power. Ah, I can't see Jesus with my own eyes, but I see a man um, in, the, in the Latin rite who's probably given up the, the, the gift and the, 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 um, all the joy of marriage and family. He's given that up the way Jesus did in his earthly life. I see this sign which helps me understand the, what's there invisibly present. Jesus, the great high priest. I hope this helps um, to uh, reflect on the mystery of the priesthood in the, uh, in the scriptures and in our Catholic faith. God bless you.